I love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's popping, guys? Hope you're doing well, doing blessed. UFC Brazil, Jolton Almeida versus Derek Lewis. Always love to watch and bet the UFC Brazil cards. They're always good to go. And before we make predictions, let's check my bets from the last UFC event, UFC 294. I made a clean sweep. The GOAT of the UFC gambling game made a clean sweep. That's six months of profit and six months of profit in a row. So what I mean by that is each month you have UFC cards and by the end of the month, if you've made money, that's called profit. And any business or smart investor would be extremely happy with six months in a row of profit. And that's why I say I'm the GOAT. Six months in a row is great evidence of how much time and effort I put into this game. It's my objective every single month to repay those who trust my work. And thankfully, I've done that six months in a row. And I've also done that eight times out of 10 this year. And by the way, eight out of 10 is minus 400. So I'm a minus 400 gambler to profit in November. And I would have to agree. I'd have to agree with that. Good luck to the bookie stopping me in November. I wish the bookmaker luck. Like at this point, eight out of 10 months, I wish the bookie luck. Clean sweep city. The last losing month I had was April. So if you're somebody that likes to make money, if you're a smart investor, if you're into like real estate or just making money, if you like money, take a look at the statistical facts and think about, you know, joining my Patreon for an extremely cheap price of just $10 a month. My return on investment in 2023 is 14%. 14, it's unheard of. It's unbelievable statistics. The statistics are facts. It's a reality. It's not a story. It's all true. I'm the go. Let's go. And don't forget to do this to the like button because this is what I do to the bookie every month. All right, first matchup on this card, we've got Kawe Fernandez taking on Mark Jacasey. So the Brazilian Fernandez will be making his UFC debut this weekend. And if you take a look at his last matchup, he's got a super nasty head kick stoppage. Like 10 out of 10 on the dusted scale, super nasty. However, if you watch his fight against Sardina, the fight he lost... He did get pretty tired after the grappling exchanges in round one. And Mark Jacasey has found some really good success with his wrestling, with his grappling later in his UFC career. So yeah, I'd say siding with the experience of Mark Jacasey is probably the smart thing to do. Just assuming he would use his wrestling, you know, bring Fernandez to the mat and potentially fatigue him. And I know Jacasey kind of fatigues too. But there's a big experience difference in this matchup. I don't think Jacasey is going to find a stoppage on the mat against Fernandez. But he is going to fatigue him. You know, you look at Fernandez against Sardina. He got tired grappling. Very tired. So my first prediction is going to be Mark Jacasey to get it done in Brazil. Let's go. All right, moving into a matchup between Eduardo Mora taking on Montserrat Ruiz. And for anyone that listens to my UFC breakdowns and predictions religiously, you know at times I can be strongly opinionated on a certain prediction. And there's two reasons why that is. Firstly, I believe you should say what you mean and mean what you say, right? And the second thing is, it's entertainment, right? Because if I'm wrong, it remains, it stays. And it's funny to listen to a prediction where someone's so confident and it gets dusted. For example, if my Hamzat prediction was wrong, if that breakdown was wrong, it stays, and it's funny. Now, guys, I'm gonna sound very, very confident in this prediction. If you look at Eduardo Mora, the explosiveness of her takedown on the contender and the timing of the takedown. So now I'm picturing that against Montserrat, a fighter that doesn't have good takedown defense, a fighter that's not good on the mat. You look at her against Amorim, you know, Amorim dusted her on the mat. And I know some people might say, well, Amorim's a high level black belt in Jiu Jitsu and Mora's a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu, but she's got the physicality more so than Amorim. She's going to be big up much bigger, much stronger than Amorim. And we know physicality wins matchups in women's mixed martial arts. So I think it's pretty easy to come to the conclusion that Eduardo Mora is going to find a stoppage on the mat against Ruiz. That's my pick. All right, moving into a matchup between Angela Hill taking on Denise Gomes. Now, this matchup is very difficult to predict. Obviously, the experience goes to Angela Hill. The output goes to Angela Hill. Knowing how to win, having been in tough matchups where she's fought the best of the best, it goes to Angela Hill. However, guys, she's not getting any younger. 
She took a lot of damage against Mackenzie Dern. And that's the type of damage that puts miles on the clock. You know, this sport is very unforgiving. You know, you don't play fighting. And the thing is, Denise Gomes doesn't play around. When this girl hits you, bodies drop. Bodies hit the floor. You know, this girl will dust you if she makes a clean connection. There's obviously some good points to make for Angela Hill. You know, the output, the experience, the combinations. There's some good points to make. But I think Denise Gomes hits really hard. She's younger and she's in Brazil. So yeah, give me Denise Gomes to do some nasty damage this weekend to Angela Hill. That's my pick. All right, moving into a matchup between Vitor Petrino taking on Modestus Bukalkas. And this is an interesting matchup. It's pretty easy to identify who hits harder, who's got more power, who's more likely to find a big knockout stoppage. That's going to be Vitor Petrino, a muscled up Brazilian dude fighting on a Brazilian card in front of crazy Brazilians. And the crazy Brazilians are going to be cheering every time there's a big connection that's made from Vitor Petrino. This is not an easy matchup for Modestus. However, Modestus understands that he's not going to try to challenge Vitor at his own game. He understands the fight isn't won by challenging Vitor at trading in the pocket. Modestus wants to play a different game, and that game is going to be footwork, speed, kicks, maintain the range, be quicker, be strong against defense and essentially take the matchup outside of round one, where Modestus potentially finds it easier and easier to be quicker to the target. And that's because Vitor's going to slow down. So both these guys have different attributes, and they're going to be looking to fight completely different fights. It's a very interesting matchup. I'm going to side with the underdog, Modestus Bukalkas. It's not an easy fight, though, you know, going over to Brazil. But I think at over plus 200... He's probably a justified prediction to make. All right, moving into a matchup between Elizu Zaleski taking on Renat Fakradinov. Now, guys, I took Zaleski and bet Zaleski at plus money against Namugamadov for the reasons that Zaleski had better striking and better grappling. I'm not really feeling the plus money this time round on Zaleski. Renat's been absolute money so far. I bet Renat minus 110 against Brian Battle and he put on a ragdoll masterclass, takedown after takedown. So more than likely, Renat can get Zaleski to the mat and probably will need to more than once because Zaleski has decent jiu-jitsu to counteract the wrestling control that Renat's going to look for. We've also got a factor in Zaleski fatiguing as the fight progresses. This really wasn't something I was too concerned about against Namugamadov because Namugamadov also kind of fatigues. And also the type of pressure that Abubakar has on the feet is not that of Renat's pressure. Renat's really good at pressuring the opponent. You know, stays nice and calm, nice and composed. Even if he's not throwing many strikes, he's still walking forward and just letting you know, look, the takedown will come. So this time round, I'm going to take the wrestler against Zaleski. I just wish the money line was a bit cheaper. But yeah, give me Renat Fakradinov to win this weekend in Brazil. All right, moving into a matchup between Victor Hugo taking on Daniel Marcos. And Victor Hugo is fresh off the contender where he essentially sent his opponent to Snap City. Or would have sent his opponent to Snap City if his opponent didn't tap. His opponent wasn't Mohamed Makayev, so indeed his opponent did tap. Now guys, for anyone who's new to watching mixed martial arts, you've just added UFC to the list of sports you bet on and you're trying to learn the game, the fight game we call it. Anytime you see someone pull off a knee bar, understand you're probably looking at a high level grappler, a person that can fold human limbs, resulting in submissions. Understand that's probably what you're looking at. So that's going to be Victor Hugo in this situation. Now, Daniel Marcos, the opponent, isn't about jujitsu. Daniel Marcos wants to be light on his feet. He wants to essentially play the chess match, the kickboxing. He wants to outclass his opponents in the stand-up. So we've got two completely different styles that make this matchup. I'm going to side with Daniel Marcos. He was in a tough matchup against Davy Grant, where he probably didn't win that matchup. I'm glad the judges gave it to Marcos because I bet Marcos that night, but... Yeah, I don't think he beat Davy Grant. Now, obviously, the challenge in this matchup would be to avoid the ground, avoid grappling with Victor Hugo, or even survive and bring the fight into round two. Then I think the experience could start to show for Daniel Marcos. So, yeah, I'm going to side with Daniel Marcos in a matchup where we've got two completely different styles. One's a grappler, one's all about jujitsu, and the other one's all about striking, all about kickboxing. Hey, if you waited to smoke with me, amen. You've been smoking this whole time, double amen. If you're not a smoker, but you enjoy the smoke breaks, 
you already know that's been a AAA main gang for some time now. Now guys, I want to give massive respect, massive credit to Francis Ngannou last weekend showcasing to the world that he can box. I will say that he didn't win the fight. If we're actually scoring it fairly round by round, Tyson Fury 96-93 or 95-94. I think Francis was the real winner of the contest just based on the fact it was that close. It shouldn't have been that close. Like, I really didn't expect that. So if we're looking at the real winner, it's Francis. But if we're going to score it round by round, which is what you do, then we'd have to say Tyson Fury was the real winner. You know, he outboxed Francis. But it shouldn't have been that close. And that's why I'm saying massive respect to Francis Ngannou. Now, guys, UFC Brazil. I've currently got four bets locked in for Brazil. I'm going to lock in a couple more later on. So I'm going to have like six, seven, or maybe eight bets for UFC Brazil. We did cash Brazil at the start of the year and I'm pretty sure we're going to cash it again. So let's go. All right, moving into a matchup between Ishmael Bonfim taking on Vince Pichel. And I'd have to say when you put a 27-year-old lightweight in a cage with a 41-year-old lightweight, I'd have to say it's going to be a very difficult matchup for Vince Pichel. And to be honest, every fight should be difficult for Vince Pichel. He's 41 years old. You cannot compete in the UFC at 41 years old. At lightweight. Ishmael Bonfim has a speed advantage, a boxing advantage, sharper striking, faster striking, and Vince Pichel should start to fade pretty quickly now being 41 years old. So give me Ishmael Bonfim to find a TKO stoppage against the veteran Vince Pichel. Alright, moving into a matchup between Rodolfo Vieira taking on Armen Petrosian. Now this matchup's going to be Jiu Jitsu versus Muay Thai. Rodolfo Vieira being the high level Jiu Jitsu player and Armen Petrosian Petrosian being the Muay Thai player. So this matchup is going to be decided based on where the fight takes place. And if you're Rodolfo Vieira getting sent flying across the octagon by Cody Brundage, that's great confirmation that you're not going to be doing anything on the feet against Armand Petrosian. So it's going to be crucial for Rodolfo Vieira to get a takedown, then it's a mismatch because Rodolfo is a slick, slick jiu-jitsu player. However, don't forget that Rodolfo's got really bad cardio. Now on the flip side, if you're Armand Petrosian, you don't have bad cardio. Your cardio is actually pretty okay. And it's also pretty difficult to get takedowns on Armand Petrosian. And even if you do get a takedown, he's got a strong determination to remain in the fight. And obviously, a fight isn't a fight unless you have something to overcome. And Armen appears to do well at fighting adversity. So I'm going to side with Armen Petrosian for the reason that his cardio is better than Rodolfo and his striking is better than Rodolfo. Two reasons to side with Armen as a pick'em. All right, moving into a matchup between Kyle Bahello taking on Abu Magomedov. Now, guys, I want to mention just how bad Magomedov looked in his last matchup. He started really well, but obviously, if you get tired after five minutes, then you've got massive problems at the highest level of mixed martial arts. And that does appear to be the case for Magomedov. Extremely tired after five minutes against the now champion Sean Strickland. And on the flip side, you've got Kyle Bahello, who's a very skilled jiu-jitsu player. Not only a skilled jiu-jitsu player, but the dude is big for the weight class. So now you've got physicality to add to the skill. And now you've got a monster on the mat. A Brazilian monster that's looking for the backpack. He's searching for necks and paychecks and probably gets that against Magomedov. Round one or round two submission for Kyle Bahello. That's my pick. All right, moving into a matchup between Rodrigo Nascimento taking on Dontel Mays. Now, guys... I've enjoyed every matchup that I've looked at so far, and this matchup I'm looking at thinking, you know, I hope this matchup gets cancelled. If someone got injured right now and the matchup got scrapped, I'll be okay with it. I'll be okay with that. This matchup is not a good matchup. Now, Rodrigo Nascimento, I don't think he's that good. I think he's slow. I think he's lazy. I think his cardio is bad. His jiu-jitsu is okay, but nothing special. He's a fighter I've never been impressed with. And same with Dontel Mays. I think Dontel Mays is just so bad. His boxing is super bad. His cardio is terrible. He's not UFC caliber. And neither is Rodrigo Nascimento. Personally, I wouldn't bet either of these fighters. But if you're an absolute degenerate and you've got to have action on a matchup between Dontel Mays and Nascimento, then I'd say bet the Brazilian in Brazil. Bet your money on Rodrigo Nascimento. You'd be better off keeping your money though, in my opinion. You know, why would you risk money on Rodrigo Nascimento or Dontel Mays? Like, if anyone's betting Dontel Mays, cash that out. Cash that out right now. But yeah, I don't think this matchup's a good matchup. 
I'm going to side with Rodrigo Nascimento. That's the pick. All right, moving into the co-main event, we've got Gabriel Bonfim taking on Nicholas Dalby. Now, guys, we've got Jelton Almeida in the main event. But in my opinion, the real star of the show is Gabriel Bonfim. I think Bonfim's got the potential to do really, really well in the UFC. And he's already doing just that. If you present your neck to Gabriel Bonfim, it's Choke City. It's Tap City. It's get dusted C. So guys, although Nicholas Dalby's got the black belt in jiu-jitsu, although Nicholas Dalby typically likes to push his opponents against the fence and wear on them in the clinch, that's probably not going to be an option this time round, seeing as Gabriel Bonfim is lethal with the neck attacks. So now I'm picturing Nicholas Dalby trying to use his sideways stance, you know, trying to use the karate against Bonfim which probably also fails, seeing as Nicholas Dalby's pretty old. I think Gabriel Bonfim, inside the distance, in the co-main event, does make a lot of sense, and that's exactly what I'm going to predict. I think Gabriel Bonfim to find a stoppage against a veteran Nicholas Dalby. All right, moving into the main event, we've got Jelton Almeida taking on Derek Lewis. Now, guys, I made somewhat of a controversial statement in the opening to the co-main event breakdown that Gabriel Bonfim is low-key the star of the show. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Jelton Almeida when I make that statement. I think Jelton Almeida is a killer, an assassin. The man has an unbelievable ground game. His jiu-jitsu is extremely high level, and if you don't give up the submission, Jelton Almeida is just going to beat you up on the mat. So either way, Jelton Almeida is an absolute monster when it comes to competing on the mat. Now obviously Derek Lewis has the one hit quitter. He could send Jelton Almeida to Shadow City if a big connection is made. Now does Derek Lewis have the cardio to go 25 minutes? No, he does not. Does Derek Lewis have the ground game to compete with Jelton Almeida? No, he does not. Does Derek Lewis have the takedown defense to keep the fight in the striking realm? No, he doesn't. Will Derek Lewis win the main event this weekend? Probably not. So give me Jelton Almeida to find a stoppage on the mat, either round one or round two, probably round one. As always, guys, let me know you're taking in the main event, your parlays, your money city comments, all that good stuff. Appreciate the support, guys. And as always, keep your eyes to the sky and never glue to your shoes. Peace.